Hello everyone, my name is Aaron and this is the Game Day Hour. Welcome back to another episode and in today's episode we are going to be predicting who I think each of the first 10 picks of this year's NFL Draft are going to take. I'm only doing the first 10 picks because if I do all the picks I'm not going to really know what each and every single team needs. I want to like you know save that for a post for later on other social media platforms. I just want to do 10 picks now and you know be prepared to give you my opinions on draft day that's something i really want to do so here are the rules the rules are simple 10 picks i'm not really taking in trades and the rule is i need to try to predict who i think each team is going to take not necessarily who i think they need even though partially is what i think they need but sometimes i'm going to think oh they're probably going to go to this direction or that direction and so with all that said I hope you are excited for this, but before I get into the video, I want to talk about how happy I am of this last month. I went from only having somewhere in the ballpark of a thousand views to over 6,000 views and that's because I started doing shorts and people are enjoying and seeing what they're seeing and I went from mid 20s to mid 30s in subscribers. I know it's a slow count, but it's going to get better and better and I, I believe that wholeheartedly. So I thank you guys so much for the support. And if you guys want to leave questions to be answered in episodes, just wherever social media, just let me know what you want me to answer. So yeah, let's get into today's episode. With the first overall pick in this year's 2024 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Caleb Williams, quarterback, USC. This is a no-brainer. Obviously, we know Caleb Williams is going to be the number one overall pick. He's been projected to be the number one even before last college football season started. So it's very simple that the Bears are going to take him. And it makes more sense now because the Bears just traded Justin Fields to the Pittsburgh Steelers. That quarterback spot is open. And they've been bolstering up their lineup for Caleb Williams, getting Swift from Philadelphia. You got Keenan Allen from the Chargers. You still have DJ Moore. You still have Cole Met, and you're just getting a lot more. It's actually great what the Bears are doing. And so I'm happy they're getting Caleb Williams. Do I think he's going to be the best quarterback to come out of this draft? I actually don't think so. I don't know who that quarterback is, but I don't know. That last season at USC was questionable, but in his Heisman year, he had a 66.6% completion rate with 4,537 yards, and he had a total of 52 touchdowns, 42 in the air, 10 on the ground. And this last season, they didn't do so hot after the Notre Dame game. They kind of just went downhill, but it's okay. He's still going to be pretty talented. Let's just hope that the Bears can actually use him correctly. With the second overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders select Drake May, quarterback, North Carolina. I know. People are saying it should be Jaden Daniels. And to be fair, these are the two quarterbacks that are being debated for the two and three spot, maybe even lower, depending on what other quarterbacks in the mix are. But the truth is, Washington has playmakers. They have Austin Eckler. They have Terry McLaurin. And while they lost Curtis Samuel to the Bills, I think that they still have a pretty loaded lineup for offense. And if you remember back in my episode when I was talking about what it means to be a game changer and a game manager, it depends on the lineup. Washington has pieces that they need. They don't need Jaden Daniels. Drake May, to me, is a perfect fit for Washington. And I mostly say that because if you look at Drake May, he kind of reminds me of Josh Allen. Not as good as Josh Allen, obviously, but he kind of reminds me of Josh Allen being able to take the ball, run it, be a heavy runner. Not one that is like super athletic like Lamar Jackson or Jaden Daniels coming up, but somebody who is tough and upfront that will get in your face like Josh Allen. Some other people are comparing him to Andrew Luck. That's actually a fair comparison, but if I'm Washington... I don't need a very athletic quarterback. First of all, Washington doesn't really know how to handle athletic quarterbacks. If you remember RG3, Drake May is perfect for Washington's system. 
Yeah, I just threw a little bit of shade on Washington, and I have no regrets. With the third overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Jaden Daniels, quarterback, LSU. Again, the two or three spot is either going to be Daniels or May. And Daniels is more fitted for the Patriots system since the Patriots don't have many playmakers on that field, or at least not in comparison to Washington. I would rather take Washington's uh, weaponry than I would New England's. And I mean, they ha New England has good weapons, but they need somebody who is going to take control of that offense. And Jaden Daniels is exactly who that guy is. Now, from all the quarterbacks, Daniels played the most years. He played with two colleges, Arizona State and obviously LSU. He is the Heisman winner of last season. And in his Heisman year, he had 3,812 uh, passing yards with 40 touchdowns, four interceptions, which is a 10-1 ratio. That's really good. Along with 1,134 rushing yards and 10 touchdowns on the ground. So he played absolutely amazing in his Heisman year. And the Patriots could really use someone like that. It's not Bill Belichick anymore. Uh, it's, an, it's Coach Gerard Mayo, I'm pretty sure. And with that said, you know, things are changing in New England. You're not going to have that pocket passer like Mac Jones or, of course, Tom Brady. So Jaden Daniels, with the little help he has on New England's offense, because the offense is going to be bolstered up. Yeah, the, the Patriots got to go for Jaden Daniels. With the fourth pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select J.J. McCarthy, quarterback, Michigan. Now, of all the quarterbacks being selected, this is one I really do not agree with because I don't think J.J. McCarthy is the fourth best quarterback. I'd say he's the sixth. I would put Bo Nix and i put Michael Penix over him because... J.J. McCarthy ran on an offense that was mostly a run heavy with Blake Corum, which is why I'm surprised that when I was looking at the running back rankings, why Blake Corum isn't the number one back. That makes no sense to me. I think he should be the number one running back. And whoever takes Blake Corum, I hope it's my Dallas Cowboys. Whoever takes him, they're going to have one heck of a running back on their hands. But anyways, back to McCarthy. I think part of the hype that McCarthy is getting is because Michigan did win the national championship. But outside of that, well, he hasn't looked that impressive. I mean, I'm looking at his stats right now. I mean, 2022 and 2023 were roughly the same type of stats. But in 2023, when he won the championship, 2,991 uh, passing yards, 22 touchdowns, four interceptions. So he was pretty good with the, uh, the ball. And he didn't have impressive rushing stats. So I'm confused why McCarthy is getting this much hype for the draft. But... Arizona looks like they're getting a little bit tired with Kyler Murray, even though Kyler Murray is better than J.J. McCarthy, in my opinion. But the problem I have with this pick is this feels like a Josh Rosen type pick. And if you guys remember what happened when the Cardinals picked Josh Rosen, uh, it was a big mistake. And so while I think Arizona is going to go this direction, it's not necessarily who I would have picked. But this is where I think they're going. If it were me, I would have taken Marvin Harrison Jr. and helped Kyler Murray out some more. But I don't think that's where the Cardinals are going. They might also trade the pick to someone else. But JJ McCarthy seems like the more likely option that they're going to go with, which I would give that grade a C minus. With the fifth overall pick. In the 2024 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver, Ohio State. This one is so easy. If you're the Chargers, you're going with a wide receiver in the first round because you lost Keenan Allen, you lost Mike Williams. You've got to have Justin Herbert some weapons. And if what I'm saying is right and the first four picks are quarterbacks, you are gifted a NFL-ready talent at Ohio State. Marvin Harrison in his last two seasons averaged 1,200 receiving yards and 14 touchdowns in both years. So he played incredible. He wasn't the best receiver this season statistically, but he's the most NFL ready and he's one that gives me Justin Jefferson type of, type of vibes, which if that's true and he does live up to be like Justin Jefferson, then Justin Herbert has himself a weapon and this would be a big pick for Harbaugh to make. So to me, it's a no brainer. The Chargers ought to go after a wide receiver. And with what I'm thinking is about to happen, he's the best available.
with the sixth overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Malik Neighbors, wide receiver, LSU. Now, I was kind of surprised that Malik was over Rome Adunze, but when I look at this guy's stats, last two seasons, he's had over 1,000 receiving yards. This last season, 1,569 receiving yards with 14 touchdowns. So LSU knows how to bring out great receiving talent. I mean, you had Odell Beckham Jr., you've had Jarvis Landry, Jeff, Justin Jefferson, who I just got done talking about, and you also had Jamar Chase. So they know how to bolster up their wide receivers, and I have no doubt that Malik Neighbors, if used correctly on the Giants, will be a big asset. Now, if it were me drafting, I think the Giants would have gone after a quarterback because is Daniel Jones actually the option? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he's the long-term deal at quarterback, but it would help that he has more weapons because the Giants just do not have a very, very talented wide receiver core. And this would be a big addition. I know they got Jalen Hyatt, or I believe it's Jalen Hyatt, from Tennessee last year, but Neighbors is better. And you'll see if they use them correctly, neighbors should be the Giants ideal wide receiver one. With the seventh pick in the 2024 NFL draft, the Tennessee Titans select Joe Alt, offensive tackle from Notre Dame. We all know he's going in the top 10. Joe Alt is one of the highest graded players in this year's draft and little known fact, Notre Dame is offensive lineman university. You know how they have tight end university. No, Notre Dame has the best offensive lineman and it's without question. Joe Alt is amazing. He is the best tackle in this entire draft. Now, Nick, the reason why I think Tennessee is going in this direction is because you just got Tony Pollard. You let go of Derrick Henry. And you also have a nice wide receiver core. And Will Levis is probably going to be, or Will Levis, is probably going to be your starting quarterback going into this season. Now, the only other thing I can think that the Titans would do is go after a quarterback if they don't think Levis is the answer. But if they go after Joe Alt, they're basically preparing for Tony Pollard and for Will Levis to have that you know, def that great offensive line. This is a good step for the Titans to take because that is a blindside player that's well, Levis is definitely going to need. I have no question that whichever team picks Joe Alt, he's going to ball out for him. But I believe it's going to be the Titans that take him. And almost every single uh, mock draft has the Tennessee Titans taking Joe Alt. So I have no question they'll go in this direction. The only other thing I can think of is if they go with a quarterback. But I don't think that's happening. So Joe Alt to the Tennessee Titans. With the eighth overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Dallas Turner, linebacker from the University of Alabama. The Falcons need to use this draft to bolster up their defense because they went all in on free agency to make their offense a lot better. Obviously, Kirk Cousins was one of the biggest moves. They also got Rondell Moore to go along with Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson and Drake London. So their offense is set. They don't need anything else there. Now they have to focus on defense, which is their Achilles heel. With Alabama, Dallas Turner, these stats aren't as impressive as I thought, but 10 sacks, 28 solo tackles, and 25 assist tackles. He, he basically did everything he needed to do for Alabama, and he's graded as the best linebacker in this draft. This is something the Falcons need to bolster up their defense because I think they go young and really start to get youth on that defensive line while, you know, the offense is much more experienced. I think this is the right direction for the Falcons to go. So, so Dallas Turner to the Falcons it is. With the ninth overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Roll Madunze, wide receiver, Washington. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. I'm sorry if I didn't. So Chicago has went on a complete offensive rampage, and I think that the mistake they made with Justin Fields is not getting him the help that he needed 
as early as they should and obviously injuries kind of stopped Justin Fields for a little bit in that last season even though they had DJ Moore so with Caleb Williams because people say Caleb Williams is going to be the next Patrick Mahomes they want to give him as much weapons as needed they already have DJ Moore they already have Keenan Allen and they have Cole Met. so you have that receiving bolster but I think what the Bears are going to do is treat the Roma Dunze pick as the Cowboys treated CeeDee Lamb to go along with Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup in 2020. So if the Bears go that direction, they're going to have one of the most interesting offenses going into next season. One that I would actually say is borderline top 10 if they do that and if Caleb Williams lives up to what he needs to be. But in his last season at Washington, 1,640 receiving yards and 13 touchdowns. He had the most receiving yards of the wide receivers I've said so far. So the Bears ought to go here and then start making moves to bolster that defense up because they did lose a lot on defense. But, but they'll spend the first half of the draft, so the first round, working on their offense and making it top notch. So this, to me, even though it's not a no-brainer, it's one I don't think the Bears can pass up. And with the 10th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Brock Bowers, tight end Georgia. Now, some people have Brock Bowers being directly at the end of the draft, but if I'm the Jets, I'm looking at it this way. What do you need on defense? You just got Hassan Reddick, and you also have Sauce Gardner, and you have much more on that defense. You don't need to change anything about the Jets' defense. If they had a great offense last season, the Jets' defense would have been considered the best in all of football. It's that offense that held them back. So if I'm the Jets and I'm thinking offensively, Aaron Rodgers is coming back. Now, we don't know how healthy he'll be for the whole season, but if you look at the rest of their lineup, you got Brees Hall, you have Garrett Wilson, you recently just got Mike Williams, but your tight end position is kind of lacking. And you also have Tyron Smith, who you just recently got to go with that offensive line. I'm thinking if I'm the Jets, get Brock Bowers. You kind of look like the Atlanta Falcons if you do that. But with Aaron Rodgers and with as great of a Jets defense as they have, you got to go with Brock Bowers. I don't see how the Jets don't take him here. You will give Aaron Rodgers so many weapons he won't know what to do with him. He's going to probably have a super season at whatever age he is. He's super old now, but he'll have a super season. You get Brock Bowers and you have all those other pieces. Come on. This is too good to pass up if you're the New York Jets. You gotta go with Brock Bowers. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe. I am super happy with the last three videos that I made. The The baseball video is close to 130. The video with the March Madness, it has 13 views, but it was still very fun to make. And then my previous one, the free agency has 81 views and counting. And then with all the shorts that I'm having, I mean, I'm having a lot of fun on YouTube in this last month and it's because bringing in the shorts and just prepping up my next episodes is very fun to do and getting that interaction with you guys in the shorts and also seeing the views start to go up and the subscribers starting to go up. I'm having a lot more fun and I'm very excited for the future of this season. This has so far been a lot more successful than last year and I've and this is going to be my eighth episode. So thank you so much for all the support. And again, if you're new here, please subscribe. I do a lot of sports content. It's mostly football, but I'll jump to baseball. I'll jump to basketball. I'll jump to college sports. I would like to do a lot of college football when college football comes around. But yeah, thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you want, go follow me on all my social media so you can interact with me and keep up for when I have content going. This is also going to be my last episode in Florida. I'm going to be making my move back to Texas and I'll be recording content from there. So that'll do it for today's episode and that'll do it for me. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care and goodbye.